Hi, this is Jonita Davis. I'm Tessa Smith. And this is the Hollywood Critics Association Longbox. We are doing this because we are longtime comic heads. I know that I've been reading comics since I was a child, stealing them from my brothers um, <laughs> and, and to read them. And, you know, when they became movies, you know, the, they became, you know, comics became even more intriguing. And I'm really into independent comics, um, which have become more and more into the movie scene um, here lately. So I'm really excited to be doing this show um, with you, Tessa. I know I'm so excited to be doing it with you because I know we both are massive comic book fans. I've been reading them since I was about eight years old and I used to steal them from my dad, starting with Sergeant Rock. <laughs> that was the first comic book I ever read. And now I'm super into Marvel, of course, DC as well. You know this, I think I even named my daughter Ivy after Poison Ivy, one of my favorite characters. So I'm really excited. And, you know, I've become, and I think you probably have too, in my group of friends, the person that everyone comes to, well, okay, this is coming out. What comics do I need to read? What run should I read? And so I think this will help. We both get asked that question a lot. And now we can just direct them to our show. Say, go to the Hollywood Critics Association YouTube. There's all the information for you right there. <laughs> right. It's better than giving a reading list to like 50 million people. Um, <laughs> so this show is going to be a connection between the comics and the films because you'd be surprised what films started their lives out in comics we will be on the hollywood hollywood critics association youtube channel um tuesdays at 11 a.m eastern um every week just uh bringing to you the comics and the films um and you know how they go together and you know a couple other things right tessa Yes, sometimes we're going to have special interviews for you guys. Sometimes the talent from the comic books themselves or sometimes the talent from the shows. Like, for example, today, our very first interview is with John Levine. He stars, sort of, in Loki alongside Tom Hiddleston, who's apparently his best friend. Let's get into this interview and learn all about how they bonded over his filming. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us today and taking the time tonight. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Let's dive into it. I want to know, because I've been, we Joe and I were just chatting. I've been on a set of a Marvel show, a movie before. She's okay. been on a DC movie, like on the set of a DC movie before. I remember I literally had to sign my life away just to like <laughs> be there. So what's it like when you're like acting on the set? Like, what did you have to sign? Oh, I mean, to be honest, it wasn't even just the uh, acting part of it. I mean, even the audition part, you got to sign an NDA. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, and, and a lot of times they're not even giving you the real sides for, you know, the actual scene because, and they change names and they say, you know, all this kind of stuff. But just to audition nowadays, you have to sign an NDA saying you're not even going to post the audition. You're not going to tell anybody you auditioned for it. And they don't even tell you what you're doing. They just say, like, like this was untitled Marvel project, like three or something like that. I mean, that's, or, or, or actually, what, what, <clears throat> excuse me, it wasn't even un untitled Marvel. It was like untitled project number three. Uh, so you know, you, you don't even know, but you can kind of guess by the fact that you're signing an NDA and which casting directors are are casting it. You're like, okay, I know who this is for, right? There's, you know, and so I don't I don't need a bunch of uh, big security guys and mouse ears coming to my house and beating me up. So let me let me sign this. Uh, sign this document but um yeah just to get on set again it's and, and even when you're leaving like they run into your trailer to make sure like everything they gave you that day is still there you know all the scripts like every everything so they keep track of it all huh oh well listen there's a huge market around for like spoilers and websites want to be the breaking news and you know like i i bought a shredder and i shred all of my audition scripts and no uh, it sounds crazy but i you know <laughs> Well, now, like, I, I don't know, I mean, this is getting a little bit into the weeds, but when, as an actor, when you download the sides from the website where you get, where your agent sends you to get the casting, it watermarks the script with your name. So if if that script shows up on the internet, somebody gets a hold of it, it's got my name on it. And yeah. you're like, uh, hey, guess who's never working again? Um, <laughs> <laughs> the name of the guy that's never working again is the same name that's on that script. So weird. It's so strange. Um <laughs> Oh yeah, but, I don't blame uh, you. So shred everything, shred, all sh evidence. Shred, <laughs> like the CIA, you know. <laughs> it's it, it's just about. I mean, it, it's that level of secrecy. Um, you know, because listen, there's I, I get it. There's money to be made for you know sites that have breaking news and spoilers and all that kind of stuff. So I don't need anybody going through my trash. I don't need you know like none of that. It's like it's all right in the shredder. 
So. Listen, I can't blame you for that. But uh, so this was exciting though, because I saw when you tweeted about when the trailer came out, you didn't realize you were even going to be able to be in the trailer, right? No idea. So I, I did this, I was originally supposed to shoot this back in March of 2020. And of course, we all know what happened in March of 2020. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, they, they I, I guess I booked it like in February and they were like, okay, your dates are going to be like end of March. Um, so make sure, you know, that you keep those open and okay, great. Um, and then mid-March was like, um, well, we're going to see how this is going to go. And by like the 20th of March, they were like, you know, everything's shut down. So, uh, so and then, you know, there was nothing going on for, for months. And uh, October rolls around and my agent calls me and they're like, hey, they want to make sure you're still available for these dates. And I said, yeah, like, of course. <laughs> and you're like, oh, no, I'm sorry. Can you move the Marvel production to fit? Right. Can you go um, around my schedule, please? Though? Right, exactly. <laughs> So, I mean, it's so super exciting. It's so awesome. I, you know, I can't tell anybody, you know, that I'm, that, I mean, my agent knew, I knew, you know, my roommate knew because, you know, she helped me with the audition and all that kind of stuff. But, but, um, and that was, you know, that's it. Uh, and then I, I'm, I've been sitting on it. I mean, I've been sitting on this whole thing. And then, and then all of a sudden, I, ironically, with the trailer, like, I didn't even know I was in the trailer. Like, they're not telling me that at all, <laughs> obviously. So I, I get into the trailer drop, like, I don't know. Like, three Mondays ago or four Mondays ago or something. So I get into my car about 8.30 in the morning to go play golf. And I put my phone into the little phone holder in my car and like the screen lights up and there's like all these like Facebook, like someone so tagged you on Facebook. There's some comment on it. And I was like, what, what's going on? So I click on one of them and I see a screenshot of me sitting behind that desk. And my first instinct was like, oh my God, where'd they get this? Like I freaked <laughs> out, like thinking it got leaked or something. Because I had no idea I was gonna, I had no idea there was a trailer coming. I had no idea I was gonna be in it. So I commented. I said, "Where did you get this?" And they're like, "Dude, you, you're in the trailer. Like you're front and center of the trailer that just dropped for Loki. Like you're part of the MCU." I'm like, "Well, yeah, I knew that, but you know, it's like I couldn't tell you." Um, yeah. So that was a that was a fun, exciting day. That, yeah, I was gonna say, how did it feel when you first like? I, I, if it were me, I would have probably watched the trailer like a hundred times in a row. And uh, I mean, you know, listen, as a seasoned actor, I only watched it 99 times. So um, professional. Yeah. Professional. Professional, Right. Right. Yeah. But then I went through it frame by frame of just my scene too. no, uh, <laughs> no, I watched, I did watch it a bunch of times. Well, cause also, cause you know, like I know what we shot and obviously it's a trailer. So that's just a very minuscule part of, of you know, what, what's actually there. And I was like, okay, what, what did they keep in? What did they, you know, I'm trying, I was trying to see what, you know, if there was anything I could glean from, from, you know, what appeared in the trailer to what maybe the final scene is going to be or what's going to, sh- you know, come up in the right. show. Um, yeah. Because I'll be honest, it's a very funny scene. I mean, you can just see it in the trailer. The well, the trailer is part- so hilarious. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, they did it really well. And 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 it's, the, and it's the writing and the writing was great. And Tom was awesome. I mean, he's, he's got such great comedic timing. So, I mean, it really... If they keep, I think, half of the stuff that we shot and, and put it into the show, I think it's going to just going to be, uh, you know, gangbusters. I can't so will you be in the like the blooper reel? Are there like outtakes <laughs> between you um, and I? <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know. That's I'm trying to. I mean, there's certainly stuff that we flubbed, and I mean that just kind of happens. But you know, what's interesting is a lot of people think that it's like you know you, you mess up a line, and everyone's like, okay, stop, like let's reset and go back to one. And you know, and depending on what you're doing, sometimes you have to do that. But most of the time, I mean, it's all editing. So it's like you say a line, you, you screw it up, you're like, uh, all right, let me do that again. They don't stop rolling. They don't do anything. Just like, okay, I can get it. And and then you just start again and, and do it, or so you know, like. Um, you know, you, you'll stop and say, let me give you, let me give you that again, in just a different way. They just kind of, and they'll just, you know, you'll do it four or five times in like a series and then they'll just kind of cut and take the trip on if they want. Um, but yeah, it's really, I mean, now with, with digital and all that kind of stuff, it's, that's really how it goes. Um, so. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I'm sure that I'm definitely sure to answer your question. I'm sure there's, there's definitely some stuff that they could put into that, that reel. Um, I mean, and, and, you know, I, I don't know if they got this on, on camera or not, but Tom stays really loose on set so mm-hmm. and he likes you know just like keeps his energy up you know it's just kind of it's just kind of his process and he and he carries a bluetooth speaker around with him that he connects to his phone so like in between takes he's like playing music and kind of just you know <laughs> keeping the groove and keeping the go and keeping the energy up and all that kind of stuff and which is which i thought was great i mean i didn't know that until i worked with him so i was just watching him work and um but yeah he's, he's a big like energy guy just keep it keep everything pumped and ready to go so yeah i well, he's like that. an energy guy right yeah, yeah. that's exactly right, what i was gonna say yeah Oh yeah, well, yeah, no, no doubt about that. I mean, it's yeah. So, so for that character, I mean, he certainly stays like you know in that space, you know, the whole time. Um, you know that, that he's just ready to go. So, 
I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so awesome. Like, I just can picture him doing that too. Like, it just seems like it fits him. He seems like he's such a great yeah, guy. And he really, he's just funny and he's really just really down to earth and genuine. And um, I'll tell you a, a brief story or I'll make a longer story brief, but, um, you know, listen, I'm, I'm John Lemmy. You know what I mean? I'm not Tom Hiddleston, I'm not Tom Cruise, I'm not, you know, I, I'm a, a day player actor that's trying to make it, right? So we're, we're on set and we're doing our, our scene, you can see it in the trailer, it's a single single, meaning they shoot the cameras over my shoulder shooting him, then the cameras over his shoulder shooting me, and that's how they, they shoot the, the scene. So they do, we do his first, and we go through it and we do, you know, all that kind of stuff, and then they're like, all right, John, we have to do a stunt where we have to drop him through the ceiling where he comes in on that first part. So they actually dropped him, which was kind of cool. They did? So they, no, they did. Everyone was like, was that like a green skin? I'm like, no. I'm like, they put him in a harness and, and dropped him. And so they were like, they were like, we'll pull your chair up and you can watch. And I'm like, oh yeah, I definitely want to see this. So I'm like, sitting behind, <laughs> I'm sitting behind like the producer's monitors and I'm watching him on top of this thing and they're taking, you know, and then, so, but it's taking long. It's taking longer than they expect because they can't get like, they, they, they had difficulty with the right height, like where they wanted him to land and all that kind of stuff. And I can tell it's taking longer than, than they wanted to. So people get whole, you know, kind of like, okay, what do we do about the look at the schedule and the shot sheet and stuff. So they finish it up finally. They're getting them out of the harness. I'm back over sort of in holding, just kind of sitting in my chair. And the director and the first AD come up to me and they're like, um, John. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> like, well, that took longer than expected. I'm like, uh huh. They're like, so <clears throat> Tom's got this big scene to shoot after, and it's got a big wardrobe and a makeup change. So we're wondering, would you be okay working with a stand in instead of with Tom when we do your single? And I was like, yeah, of course. Like, you know, well, well, you know what am I going to say? Like, I'm going to, no, call my agent. That's, <laughs> right. no, that's ridiculous. You know, and, and they were like, thank you for being so flexible. And, and I even said to them, I joked, I said, well, what would you have done if I said no? They were like, well, we would have drugged you and made you do it anyway. I said, well, can, and yeah. I said, well, can I get the drugs? Because, you know, I'm being so yeah, flexible. Like, right, so we're laughing. We're having a good time. They're like, awesome, great. You know, they go back to work. Two minutes later, Tom comes walking by and stops. And he's like, hey, they just told me that I'm not working with you for your single. And I said, yeah, man. I said, it's cool. Like, I know you got a big wardrobe and makeup thing and, you know, no problem. Totally expecting him to be like, I wish I could, but we're running out of time. Or, you know, it's great working with you. Like, that's would have been par for the course. He goes, no, that's not right. You were there for me and I got to be there for you. I'm fighting this. And he, run, and, and I was, he runs back off to the drink and I'm sitting in the chair. I'm like, what just happened? Like, what? I mean, I'm like stunned. And, and I'm just sitting there like, did that, did that just really happen? And then he comes in, he's like, I'll be back in 20 minutes and runs off in the other direction. And I'm like, oh my God. So literally 20 minutes later, they're like, all right, John, we need you in first position. They put me on set. He comes running up. He's in a different wardrobe and different makeup and, He's like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. So they couldn't shoot over his shoulder because he was wearing a different different wardrobe. So they put, they still had his stand in, in front of me. And then he was behind the stand in, you know, working with me, doing the lines and, and all that kind of stuff. So it really, I mean, I was just absolutely blown away that, I mean, he's the star of the show, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he's, he's Thor's brother for Pete's sake. And, and I said to him when we cut, I said, hey man, I said, that was, that was really awesome. Like, it was just really cool. And he just, he looked at me, he's like, hey, man, we got to stick together, right? Dick and Steve. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, because we're just two actors working together. That's right, <laughs> me and you, Tom, we're like, we're like best friends right now. You know, yeah. and I was like, so, I was like, so excited. I'm trying to keep it inside. I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, Dick and Steve's cool, cool, cool. So. <laughs> wow. So you're like, okay, now my how, best friend is Tom. My best friend. That's right. That's yeah, right. Best. We're best that's friends. right. I, so here's the tattoo that I got. Of, right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I sent him uh, the matching one. He never got it. I don't know. Never, right. He said, he was like, who's this again? I'm sorry. What? Um, he's like, listen, Jake. I'm like, it's John. He's like, exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but he, that, I mean, but that's what kind of guy he is. I mean, I think that really illustrates the fact. And listen, I've never worked with anybody who's been anything but really nice and, and great to work with. But that was really just next level type yeah. stuff. I mean, to, mm -hmm. to, to really just, you know, say, no, that's, it's not right. Like you were there for me. You, you know, you and I were working great together. I need to be there for you. And, and, you know, tell the director that's what we're doing, and obviously the director's like, okay, that's what we're doing. And right. I mean, it was just, it was, an, I mean, it was, it was definitely the most inspiring moment I've ever had on set, ever. So um, I walked out of there pretty, pretty proud that day. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool that he did that. So um, one of my friends interviewed him before, and she said she like tripped going into the room, and he caught her, and she said, <laughs> he's the nicest. <laughs> it, I mean, it's crazy. It's, it's that's that he, you know, you, you call, <clears throat> he's like lozenge, you know what I mean? He's got, <laughs> the guy's just 
He oh that's awesome. He's that's just so really super down to earth and super super nice and 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 friendly and funny. He's really I mean he's really funny. Just kind of very congenial, you know. Just he's the kind of guy you want to hang out with, you know. Yeah. I can see that too. That's good because they always say like, don't meet your heroes or, you know, you see people and you get a different right. opinion of them. So that's nice that he's actually really that great a guy, you know? Yeah. And interestingly enough, it's not like I ever had an opinion of him prior to, like, I didn't know, I mean, obviously I've seen him in movies and stuff, but you know, I didn't really formulate, I've never, I don't think I've ever, ever seen an interview with him. Or anything yeah. Like that. So I, I didn't really have uh, an opinion of him, you know, kind of going in. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, I was just blown away, just blown away. So was it just one day of filming that you had? No, I was actually there for two. I'm in two different episodes. Um, oh, see, I saw that on IMDb and I didn't know, because you never know with IMDb. Yeah, I said. Yeah. Oh, that's what you said, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, I am in two different episodes. I can't, obviously, I can't really, t I mean, not that I, well, whatever. Right. I can't talk about what, what's the second episode, but but I am in, in two different. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. So you, so you are best friends with him because you got, you got, you're in the second I'm episode. Just, I'm <laughs> telling you, like that. I'm, clearly, Tom was like, I want that guy back. No, but yeah. no. <laughs> no. Finally, like a week later, I'm like, Tom, stop calling me, bro. Like, my, my phone battery's dying, man. Like, stop blowing up my phone. I'm just kidding. Tom, call me. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask about filming you know, during the pandemic, because I've heard that there's a lot of mask on, mask off, you've got monitors now. And how different is it filming, you know, after, post pandemic? 100%. Um, I shouldn't say 100% different, but it's, it's um, obviously there's so many protocols that are in place, like just to get on set, I had to take five COVID tests, like prior five? The no swab five. ones? Yes. Oh yes. my God. I mean, the brain swab. Um, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so they had, well, production had their own, um, they had two, two COVID testing sites, like drive through, like the ones you see, like the CDC sets up, like they had their own ones of those. Well, listen, everybody on set had to get tested three times, mm -hmm. you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So they needed that kind of, you know, of that, that kind of throughput. So they were like, all right, you got to go to these testing sites. You have to go on this date and then this date and then this date. And you're going to get tested once you get to set and like all this kind of stuff. Now, luckily for me, SAG worked out a deal with, you know, Hollywood that we get paid for those tests. So it's like, oh, okay, you, you, want to, you want to stick a swab up my nose? Yeah, go ahead. I'll take the money. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, so it was, so just that alone, just to get on set. I mean, just to go to my fitting, which was at the studio, I had to get a COVID test two days before. I had to show up negative before I could even walk in to get my fitting. So it was all that kind of stuff. Um, on set, um, I, 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 don't quote me on this, but it was like, the rules are basically like, <clears throat> if you're dealing with an actor that doesn't have a mask on you have to have a mask and a face shield so anybody so like makeup and hair like they couldn't do it obviously if i had a mask on so i had to take my mask off so they had to have a mask on and then they had also had a face shield mm, okay. um and then anytime you're on set actually anytime you're not in a situation like that or on camera your mask is on um so the only time he, i could take off my mask was when they were like all right john we need you in first position as i'm like walking up to set take off my mask they have a little box that's got my name on it where i put my mask and get it back when you know so no one else is touching it um and then there's these uh they have these fresh air breaks so every 15 minutes if you're shooting doesn't matter like where you are in the process I mean, you can be like all right we're gonna make do it no second take it's like nope Fresh air breaks. So everybody's got to you put your mask back on. You have to go outside for five minutes, hang out outside for five minutes, get some fresh air, and then you come back in, get back in first position. Take your, you know. So yeah. So there's a lot of um, a lot of processes and procedures, which is good. I mean, listen, I'm not mm -hmm. complaining about it. You know, it, 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 I don't think there's another business in the world that r has a running clock that you know is directly tied to money like that business and mm -hmm. one you know, positive person or one, you know, outbreak on a set because we'll be so tightly packed together. We'll be so close together. You know, could you can shut down production for weeks and that's, you know, millions of dollars. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I totally get it. But I, and it was funny because when I was, uh, when we were shooting, it was about the same time that that thing with Tom Cruise came out with his recording when he was like yelling about COVID safety. And, yeah. You know, it was like, you know, he like freaked out and was like, yeah. And people are like, oh, can you believe he did that? I'm like, listen, I said, he's absolutely right. You know, he's he's 100% correct. The fact that, you know, we have to be so careful because everybody's making, you know, this is their, this is everybody's livelihood. Mm -hmm. And one, you know, errant person, one person who's being lackadaisical about it can, can you know, 
sabotage at all. So I had, no, I, I mean, maybe could have done a little more tactfully, but you know. <laughs> Just I'm, not gonna tell Tom, I'm not going to tell Tom Cruise what he can and cannot do. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Tom, if you're listening, I would love to be in the next uh, Mission Impossible. Right. Movie. I could write yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. And then you could have two Toms that are best friends. It would be Listen, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be the t- in the Tom sandwich right there. Right. The, the, you wouldn't the, mess up the, the name when you answer the phone. Exactly. The, the creamy center of a Tom sandwich. I'll tell you. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Oh I'm gonna go over well on YouTube. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> my career is not gonna be defined by that one statement that I just made, but okay, Listen, it's going cool, right. It'll be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that like totally threw me off. What was I gonna say? Oh, uh, <laughs> it really did throw me off. Um, so, have you ever read any of the the Loki or Thor comic books? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I was a I was a comic book kid growing up, um, and really specifically Marvel. Like my, my brother was a, a Batman kid, so he was a big DC guy, and I thought D, I always thought DC was just a bunch of dudes running around in pajamas, you know. But um, like to me, Marvel was like you know you had the X Men, and yet I was a big GI Joe fan, so I used to read a lot of GI Joe comics. Um, you know, Thor. I mean, everybody. And so I was just a big, um, and I was a huge Punisher fan. Like the oh, Punisher series Punisher. was, yeah. 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 So I actually found my dad's uh, attic. He moved last year and he was like, Can you go up to the attic to see what's up there? And there was a box of comic books, like that. I guess my mom had said whatever it was, but I found like the original Punisher series that was in there and like all, yeah, and all, all still in the plastic, all like with the cardboard and all. Yeah, I know. I was very excited. Yeah, that's excited. awesome. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course, I looked up the value. It was nothing, but I was like, I at least have these. These are still mine from, you know, some right. of my childhood. <laughs> right. It's oh, an investment awesome. still, you know. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. Listen, in the plastic, that's like impressive. That's really, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for thank storing you. them like that. Good yeah, job. Thank you. I, I was I was very proud of a 15-year-old John as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> if, so, if, there's not, if nothing else, he came through with it. Right. <laughs> so as a Marvel fan, like, what does it feel like, kind of, that, like, you're in the MCU now? I know, which is, it's, it's, it's crazy to even think about. It's funny because, you know, now I'm in the MCU, I'm in the uh, Karate Kid universe because I was mm-hmm. on Cobra Kai. Yeah, I said, yeah. if I could get into Star Wars or Indiana Jones, you pretty much wrapped up my childhood right there. Like, I mean, that's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's almost surreal to think about, you know, like if you kind of stop and think, you know, because listen, I've seen all the movies and, you know, I'm, I love them and I, and I watch them and I've watched now all the shows on Disney plus and I think they're great, you know, so just to be a part of that, um, is, is, you know, it's an honor and it's, and it's, a, you know, something I'm very proud of, you know, and, and, and it's, I mean, this business is really hard, you know, to, to, to just in general, you know, so I'm really happy with anything that I book, you know, it's, um, but to, to see how this turned out and to be on that set and to have that experience and, and all that kind of stuff that, that came along with it, um, was really just it, it was it was mind blowing and it's really something a point of pride that I, that I have. So. Well, I'm excited to see you. I'm really excited. It'll be like I know him. I know who his <laughs> yeah. best friend is. It's Tom Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Tom Cruise. We don't know. Oh, it's, it's a Tom. That's all. That's we right. know. Tom and wow. Tom. Right. <laughs> so, did you get to keep anything at all from the set? Yeah. Nothing. I mean, I took home like a like a. a like a kind bar that was in my trailer. It was like, <laughs> I, put, I put that in my pocket so I could eat it on the ride home. But I mean, that's, that's about, it. I mean, yeah, I yeah they, they no, they're, they're, yeah. I mean, they have, um, you know, wardrobe. Once you take off your wardrobe, you know, you put it into this bag that they, that they give you and they're making sure, okay, it's, you know, the tie is there, the pin is there, the, you know, and everything is, is there. And, and like I said, the, the script that they give you for the day, which is to be honest, is only like, you know, like, four pages long I mean, it's not like they give me the whole you know series right. they just give you your little part right mm-hmm. correct correct maybe a couple of pages before a couple of pages after for whatever they're shooting that day so they have to print up like different ones but nothing you know uh extensive but they make sure that that's there make sure you know all that kind of stuff so not even the badge or anything you didn't get nothing oh man nothing. not even well, i'm good. i'm in the mcu now t-shirt <laughs> nothing you know uh that i i have i haven't worn it yet <laughs> no, but it's it's uh, yeah, and the other thing is obviously you know you, I'm 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 a professional, you know, so I'm supposed to act in the you know what I mean. It's supposed to be like, hey, this is just, this is my job. This is what I right, do. Right, yeah. You know, you know, you know, I can't. You don't want to fanboy out. You want to geek out on kind of you know. Even though inside I'm like sitting on set and I'm like watching all stuff. I'm like, this is so cool. You <laughs> yeah. know, but but um, you know, you have to be professional. You have to say, okay, this is you know, yeah, like like uh, 
<clears throat> I'm trying to remember who he used to say it, but it was a football player. So when you score a touchdown, act like you bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's what that's what I try to do. Barry Sanders, that's who said it. Act like you bit. I like that. I yeah. probably would be freaking out. I don't know that I could not. I mean, I guess you just have to, right? But man. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you, you're there to do a job. So you have to, right. you know, you, you kind of have to keep that in check. Uh, I mean, even like with Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai was really the first like big production, like a, like a real, real production that I shot. And like I had, I had like a 7 a.m. call time or 6.30 call time in the morning. And, and uh, I got there and I was in the production trailer and they're giving me paperwork and stuff. And they're like, oh, and so-and-so will take you to your trailer. And I'm like, my trailer i'm like yeah i'm like of course my trailer like why am i not already in my trailer you know and and, and i remember like going in there i was like oh thank you very much and they were like okay and they, i closed the door and i'm like Whoa. I'm like taking selfies in the trailer i'm like that's where i am you know i was like i'm so freaking out because it was the coolest thing ever um and then you know i, I got on that set it was on sound stage and there was i mean tons of people around and billy topka was there and cholo was there and all you know and uh it, i mean it was you know, so super cool. But then you just got to remember, okay, I'm here to do a job. I got to, A, I want to be in character. I don't want to like blow that part, <laughs> you know? Uh, so, yeah. That's cool. I loved Cobra Kai too. So, yes. Like, big right. fan. Yeah. Cobra Kai was fun. I, I want to ask, did, did you like connect with any other fan? people there i mean was it like being a fan was something like a secret you had to keep you know like i don't want to show them i don't want to tell them i'm a fan because they might kick me out of here um or was it like you know there were a lot of other people that were kind of like you know fanboying yeah. fangirling out a little bit just a little bit yeah i mean i don't know if anybody was like fanboying fangirling out but listen it, you know we're all just kind of regular people too like we enjoy mm-hmm. stuff that, that you know everybody enjoys so you know there's definitely people on time there's a guy on set wearing a captain america teacher you know that he probably picked up at target somewhere you know it wasn't like mm-hmm. a, a set teacher or anything like that so it's it's one of those things where you know yeah i mean i definitely enjoy the movies and it's, you know you don't hide it you know you don't hide it but you also don't want to be um you know like like just somebody there that's like just freaking out they're like oh my god you know that, that, that type of person you know you want to just kind of keep it on the level but yeah but no i was certainly talking with some other actors that were there and some other people that were you know working you know about oh we were talking about endgame and we were talking about different you know stuff that was going how this was going to fit into the mcu and you know so everybody there was was uh i would actually like to speak to the people who work on that set that were like i hate the mcu <laughs> dc forever you know and no i'm just kidding but there's got to be some people that i'm just sure there's MCU someone and, yeah, yeah it's got to be right yeah exactly. justice league was a much better movie yes yeah. <laughs> Um, um. <laughs> Joe's oh, a big, are... big DC person. Joe, I'm yeah, the Marvel you... girl. She's. Okay, she so likes Joe, the I am, but um, but I gotta yeah. ask you. So, did you watch the Zack Snyder cut of the? I'm sure you did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. So, what, what was your, what was your opinion? Of it? I know I'm not here to ask you, you questions, but I'm just my opinion of it is, um, I think that it. I thought I liked it. I really, really loved it, and and, and I thought that it showed it kind of revealed that there's some stuff that kind of goes on behind the scenes with editing and politics and stuff that kind of comes out in the movie process um Definitely. yeah with that four hours when you draw out four hours you kind of pick up all the <laughs> everything that was you know all those little decisions that were made and, and then you start yeah so I, I i really liked it though the action the the amazons i really loved it all i i did i, I will say this i did like the movie i, I mean four hours is way too long for a movie i don't care what movie it is but yeah um, yeah yeah it was long i, I had to take I a break two, you know two nights. Yeah, I, I watched it in two stretch nights. I watched it two, two, yeah exactly um and i liked it a lot better than justice league which is frankly not saying much because it wasn't a high bar to cross because i thought justice league right. was terrible and and but but what i realized was why i didn't like justice league the original cut was because they didn't get too in depth into the characters like it, you know mm-hmm. the, the the beauty of the marvel of the mcu is like they gave you that breadth of character development mm-hmm. in the individual movies before you got to see them kind of all together so you didn't you knew their backstory you didn't have to, like but there wasn't a cyborg in the movie that you know i was like who's this guy you know what i mean mm-hmm. i had no you know so i think and but once they showed that in the Zack snyder cut i was like okay now i like this a little bit more because it's it's more understandable i now understand why the characters are doing these things and, and feeling these ways and that kind of stuff so i definitely liked it a lot more than the, than the original cut um but i still like it too I listen, I 100% agree with you because I'm MCU and I say the same thing. I say, why did they throw all these people together without giving them their own individual? They tried to, I feel like they tried to rush to catch up to Marvel. Like, I we're going to do true. an ensemble movie. And you're like, but we don't know these people. Right. right. Who's, who's the ensemble? 
Yeah, right. I'm going right. to lose my DC card, DC fan card for saying this, but I think I, I agree with all everything you said because I, I'm like, okay, guys, you can't do um, just throwing everything in and saying here, you know, here's your movie. I mean, we. <laughs> right. Well, we you can't do know. it without doing a four-hour movie to explain right. it. Right. I mean, right. Yeah. I mean, can can we like take parts and pieces out and you know, like, if you want to catch up with Marvel, fine, but kind of do the character development that they kind of do in the individual right. movies. So Marvel's and, a, tw- a twelve-year yeah. arc or something like that. Right. It's, exactly. You know, can we and, do and, that? And, right. <laughs> well, and, and and you could, but you gotta you have to commit to it. I mean, that's the thing. It's like they, yeah. you have to say, all right, this is our this is our plan, and you know, Kevin Feige obviously was able to kind of, you know, make that all happen. And it was, it, listen, what they did is, um, I think, a monumental feat in, in in anywhere, but especially in Hollywood, where it's all mm-hmm. about bottom line. But they made good movies. I mean, they, you know, not all of them were stellar, no doubt. But, I mean, it, 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 it was a, there was a lot more good ones than bad ones, and that's what mm-hmm. kept everything going. And the storyline was great. You really wanted to see, you know, how it kind of resolved itself. So... And now that they're moving into the whole, you know, Disney Plus thing, which they're, you know, interweaving all those stories, I think is so super cool. You know, it's all now, that's all canon. So I think it's great. It's a great way to do it. it. They're killing it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I saw Kevin said he has plans through like 2028 right now. Oh, yeah. Like, I can just imagine, I'd love to be in his office and just see, I, I picture that, like, you know, that meme with the they're connecting all the stuff oh, like yeah, i imagine yeah, that charlie day charlie like day yes he's like, yeah, yeah I, love I like imagine that and kevin like just <laughs> every little it, thing you know what it's probably like that and I there was a story that, that i read yesterday about dr strange and wandavision i don't know whether they had to rewrite yes. some of dr strange because he was supposed to appear in wandavision yeah. and then they cut it out um so they had to kind of write what was going to happen in wandavision into the into- movie so yeah, so I mean, I mean, it's good that they're flexible and they're able to do stuff like that kind of on the fly, I guess. But um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 crazy to even to even think. And now, and, you know, it's, what's crazy? You've got now movies and TV shows going on simultaneously with different reveals and different character arcs, and you know that they're all gonna gonna pull together. So I I think it's I think it's fantastic. So do you have any theories on what happens in Loki besides what you like that you don't <sighs> you know, know? You know. Yeah, listen, like I said, they don't give me much information, right. so I don't, you know, it's, it's, which is good for me because I don't have to lie about anything, but, um, <laughs> you know, I have plausible deniability, as they, right. as they like to say. Um, but, uh, you know, I, it's interesting. I, now obviously, they're setting up the whole multiverse, you know, timeline thing, that, you know, that, that's going on. Um, and that was obviously evident with Doctor Strange and the multiverse of madness, you know. <laughs> right. it's, you know mm-hmm. So they sort of introduced that whole concept of the time heist and, and you know, how time splinters, but there's different timelines that go on at the same time. Um, but I, I don't, I, I really don't, I don't know what part Loki is going to play in that big, because, and they were, and somebody was, I think it must have been on Reddit or something I was reading, that they were talking about how his hair looks different. And they were like, well, that's not Loki from Endgame. That's Loki from, you know, 2010. That's that's a Loki variant, as they refer to mm-hmm. him. And, you know, that's not, you know, Tom Hiddleston from 2020. That's Tom Hiddleston from 2011, you know, or whatever, whatever, you know, that time was. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm like, I didn't even think about that. Like, that's not the same Loki. So now right. there's like two Lokis. So he goes back to, you know, like into, there's, there's going to be multiple Loki. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of. I mean, it was, it was on Reddit, and of course, it was yeah spiraling out of control. And I was like, all right, it's four o'clock <laughs> yeah. in the morning. I go to bed, but um, oh, yeah. but it was pretty fascinating. And I was like, God, and, and I didn't even think about that. Like, I didn't even think about you know it's how they crazy. changed his appearance to more represent him back. You know, the earlier Loki. That's so cool. That's amazing. Yeah. No, I'm excited for it. So there's already a season two, isn't there? Like they've said it's been picked up. I'm pretty oh, sure really? it's been oh, picked that, up for season uh, two. That's, a, that's fantastic to hear. Someone was saying that. Now, I don't know. I think it was on, I'm not 100% sure. It was like an official announcement, but yeah. um, I saw like a whole Twitter conversation about it because mm. if they, if Kevin trusts him, like this director is also do or writer is also doing something else that Kevin is, oh, the Star Wars movie that Kevin's going to be doing. Mm-hmm. It's the oh, same okay. person from Loki. And they were like, if they trust this writer with a season two, as well as this. And I was like, wait, a season two? Mm-hmm. That oh, was like cool. just before here. So I haven't gotten to confirm it yet, but. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, that's awesome. Well, maybe yeah, you'll be back. It. Maybe you'll have yeah. a role in season mm-hmm. two. Fingers crossed here. I'll have, to, I'll have to, Tom, if you're listening, give me a call. 
call yeah. anybody. He's your best um, friend. He's going to put a good word in for you. Best, really yeah. Yeah. Me, me, Tom, and the cat are uh, possibly coming <laughs> That's back. That's right, the cat. I wanted to ask the you cat. about the cat. Yeah. So, like, did you get to, like, legit, like, hang out with a cat? I didn't. And you know what? And, and it's it's always disappointing when I'm like, oh, I'm going to be working with an animal because I see it, you know, in, in my part of the script. And and then I get there and they're like, oh, no, we already shot the scenes with the animal. And I'm like, oh, because, <laughs> you know, it's so much easier when there's nobody on set and I can just shoot the cat stuff and then edit it in, you know, like it's, yeah. and, and, I'm, and I'm like, I didn't even get the chance to meet the cat. I mean, I was like, so, you know, and they're like, yeah, that's Tom Hiddleston over there. And I'm like, yeah, but the cat. Like, the cat's on my mug. I have to be friends with this cat. I have to right. The, the cat. I'm the cat guy. I'm the cat guy. Listen, How do I not meet the cat? It's part of your character. You need that. Seriously, I needed, I needed that. I'm the cat. <laughs> so when you shot, was did you shoot with like a plushy, a plush thing? Or was it like a nothing there or what how did they add the cat in well no because he was below like he was in front of the desk where i was sitting mm -hmm. you, yeah so so they yeah. basically just shot all that stuff with the cat in front of the desk before i even got there and then when i got on set they you know they just shot tom and i and then just kind of movie magic and edited yeah. it all together and stuff you know uh but no i, I never you know people ask me oh, how was the cat i'm like i, I didn't meet the cat i didn't, I didn't I know Maybe we'll later, since everything ties in, you know, right. later on, like, like well, the, I, the fine. I, I was doing another interview and, and they asked me if the cat was like one of those creatures, like at the end of the uh, captain. Uh, yeah. And they're like, was it what? I'm like, I didn't even think about that until you just mentioned something. I'm like, I have no idea. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, uh, I mean, like, it could be. I didn't even think about that, but it could be. You that never know why they didn't want me to touch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah but yeah. <laughs> right, it was going to eat you if you. <laughs> right, I was going to have a patch like like Nick Fury. You know? Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. Oh uh, man. Well, thank you for taking the time today, Joe. You got thanks. any more questions or? Wow, oh, this has been time. fun. This has been yeah. fun. <laughs> thank you for being well, thank, our first guest. This is so well, exciting. Th thank you for having me. This was this was awesome. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. It's so fun. So if there's a season two, we'll have to have you back and we'll talk about, maybe you'll get to meet the cat in season two. Maybe. Listen, if, I, if there's season two, I'm going to be way too big time for you guys, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, okay. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> yes, I would love to come back anytime, please. Uh, just let me know and I'll be here. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much. Do you want to yeah, give like you. a plug on where people can find you or? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can just go to my website, johnlevine.com. It's J-O-N, no H and John. Um, or you can find me on IMDb, same name, John Levine. Um, and it's got all my social media. It's got, you know, if you want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. It's, uh, it's usually under John Levine uh, on those things as well. But uh, yeah, follow me and tweet at me or I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Well, yay! I'm so excited. So yes. you're going to be, you're in the first episode, June 11th, right? I think it's episode uh, June 11th. One. It yes. is episode one. Yeah. So that's, uh, I, I am, I, well, I, I'm in that episode. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm excited to see it. And thank you again thank for you. taking the time today. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you very much. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview as much as we did. John is a gem and it was so much fun talking with him. I had an absolute blast. As you can tell, we recorded it a little bit ago because we said Loki starts on June 11th, but it does start on June 9th now. They changed the date. They moved it up. We're so excited. And uh, actually, our very first show live is going to be on June 1st, again, at the Hollywood Critics Association YouTube, which is where you're watching this right now. So make sure you hit that subscribe and notification bell so that you get notified whenever one of the amazing shows, because there's a bunch more amazing shows just besides ours, besides the HCA long box. And uh, make sure you tune in June 1st, 11 a.m. Eastern time right here. We're going to talk about a lot of amazing things, including Sweet Tooth, which I'm really excited to talk to you about. Oh my God, Sweet Tooth. I love it. I love it. So um, yes, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yes. So. We'll see you all there. <laughs>